I spent seven years working on Frankie's on Yaku Frank. And more or less af after five years, I could say that I understand Yaku Frank. That I, I I knew who he was, what kind of person he was, what was his historical media, what um, now I've been working on Ibershit's I mean, I've been reading Ibershit probably for 10 years. I've been intensively working on Ibershit for the past four years. And uh, the more I work on him, the less I understand. Uh, if at the beginning I had some ideas, who was this man, what kind of person he was, and uh, um, I, I had a feeling that I know less and less. This is, the first uh, thing. I, I, I mean, I'm knowing much more. I'm, I'm much more puzzled than than I was at the, at the beginning. Now, having said that, uh, I do think that there are. First of all, there are direct lines you can uh, you can show. Uh, for instance, Vavo Hayamahai is quoted in Arabic twice. There is one sermon on the on the head of Esau. Uh, being uh, buried in uh, in Hebron, uh, which brings is, is in the second volume of Yavad Vash, uh, and it brings a quote from the uh, uh, There is another sermon which brings uh, which brings which discusses uh, discusses the uh, Shemot Gerim, the soul of the convert, the world being created from the souls of the of the converts to uh, to Judaism, and this also comes comes up in um, in uh, in the Arab Tvash. Um, there are other things uh, in Irish. There's other other works. I can show continuity. I can show that he is going back uh, to the to the same ideas, right? Maybe it should be said. Vahayam Archaim is his first text. Irish is quite unique. Uh, uh, and even if you look at the halachic stuff, even if you look at Kratio uh, Flatio or in Purim Batumi, right? Everyone who who, who, who read these these works, uh, uh, it says that there's something very strange about the way he combines people, uh, uh, right? Uh, 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 contemporary halacha. We are in the mid. Uh, uh, 18th century basically abandons this pluralistic uh, 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 arguments and tries to rationalize uh, 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 much more um, instead of going in this endless. Uh, uh, I, 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 there is something about Ibishitz which which sets him apart uh, uh, from uh, from contemporary uh, 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 contemporary. Uh, and then there is his engagement with the with the Christian world, right? The fact that he's not only not only does he have a theology of Christianity, but he's probably, to the best of my knowledge, he's the only 18th century rabbi uh, who really studies Christian theology uh, and quotes it and refers to it, uh, right? And then reads the for and then also has the engagement with uh, with Christianity, but for uh, for and then the engagement with Christianity is the engagement with the New Testament. Uh, he would not read contemporary Protestant theology. I wish it does. Um, and uh, he's very much in dialogue with, with, his, uh, with his contemporary world. So maybe uh, 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 I wish it should be seen more in the context, uh, 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 more in the synchrony perspective, right? The man of the mid 18th century in dialogue with his, with his environment. And not as someone who is at the end of the line of uh, uh, development of um, of um, uh, great uh, rabbis. Uh, and finally, uh, to your question about Jewish exile and uh, uh, and universal exile, I don't think it's getting lost. I I, I, I do think that uh, you know at the end of the day, the exile is about the lower ranks of divinity. So to say the God of uh, Israel and uh, um, and, uh, and, uh, and and the Shechina, um, and it is the theme which comes up here, also comes up in in, in, in the sermon. Right? I think uh, there is something special about the Jews, uh, right? Even if it is not the only true religion, if it is not the uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, the best 
religion, the highest religion, and so on and so on, so forth. I I I I I I I would take my text from an earlier paper of yours, in which uh, you write that Lutheran missionaries from Hama who met Ibishitz reported that he had studied the writings of the radical pietist and member of the Moravian Brethren, Johann, Christ, Johann Christian Edelmann, and that he expounded Lutheran theology to the students of his yeshiva. Now, that by coincidence, I happened to be reading a book by Martha Keith, Marsha Keith Shuchard, Shuchard, I don't know how you, you pronounce her last name, called William Blake's Sexual Path to Spiritual Vision, in which she traces the sexuality in Blake's poetry and art to his parents' involvement with a Moravian congregation in London. Now, granted, most of the stuff she talks about are from the middle of the 18th century. But I wonder if the sorts of things she talks about, like the theology of the wounds of Christ, which crops up in in uh, was part of the Moravian heritage. Now, I, I, I stated, and I will correct an inaccuracy in my paper, I stated in a footnote that Ibishitz grew up in Poland. He, in fact, left, he was born in around 1690, and when uh, he was about 12, his family moved to Ibishitz in Moravia. And between then and his coming to Prague, he was, he was in different places in Moravia and saw himself as part of a persecuted religion, both as a Jew in Christian society and as a Shabbatian sympathizer in Jewish society. Is it not thinkable that he would have seen the Moravians as a, what would you call it, the only word I can come up with is Lanzmann. You know, the sort of brothers under the skin. And would have been open to some sort of a synthesis with them. Because when you talk about, if, 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 um, if, this, if this book by Marsha Chuchar is right, and you can tell my expertise in this area from my referring to this book plus Wikipedia, <laughs> but if this is right, then it's, it, it would appear to me that the eroticism, the erotic obsessions, could have easily been influenced by the Moravians. Uh, this, is, this is fantastic. This is terrific. I just, if I can, if I can, the igno if ignorant little me can add something is, when he met Moravian thinkers or read Moravian writings, he found there a very different Christianity than he would have found reading, reading what he could call supersessionist uh, understandings of Jews. That is, the Moravians had uh, an innovative, in many ways innovative understanding of Jews and of the obligations of Christians towards Jews. And in fact, the Moravians are the, not just, they are the founders, not just parents, but founders of the movement to missionize the Jews. And uh, as far as the European continent is concerned, and the separation from uh, Britain, they are also the first movements of European to try and restore the Jews to Zion. So, um, we can, uh, I don't know if that would have, would have influenced if I had obviously met also Christians who were not hostile uh, towards Jews and who would have certainly wanted to converse with them. That, that's my, my, again, this is just a guess. I don't, I don't know the details, but uh, I think the fact that we are talking about the radiance in the 18th century is very, very important. 
exploded. Halle became a center for Protestant interest in the Jews. Pavel speaks of the more he studies Ibershitz, the less he understands. I find this man a mystery beyond mystery. <laughs> so I have, I have two questions. I hope you'll we'll give me a chance to ask them both, because one follows on, on Ruth's um, comments. I was also curious about, particularly in relation to David's paper, the relationship between this esoteric and cosmological discussion of sex, and then what you seem to be taking as an equivalent to, you call it liberal pieties of the 21st yeah. century. So, so actual human sex. And I, so I was wondering about the separation that would have existed between those four of these 18th century figures, particularly since, um, as Pavel described, the Mannheim, I think, uh, Kassidim Shula was particularly um, interested in aesthetic practices. So I'm curious about how these different facets fit together. And, and you were also describing the um, Sabbatite speed and um, that sort of mystical union, uh, right, where there's not actually sex happening on a, a physical level. Um, so I'm, I'm curious also, like Ruth, about the, the aesthetic dimensions of these movements and how do we fit those together with um, these texts that are very explicit. Um, that's on the one hand. The, the, the other question I have is, how, how did these 18th century Sabbateans see their own Judaism? Um, and I was fascinated by the descriptions um, probably that you gave of the statements um, that Ibeshites would make, which, um, as you said, it, 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 the, the least are, are, are a, a weak um, sort of re rejection of Sabbatite Svi, and, and at the most is sort of embracing it in a, in a secret way. So there seems to be this kind of secret knowledge among this elite, and that there's no problem, there's no problem with that they, is that they don't need to be martyrs um, and yet can remain Jewish. I, I, and these are uh, not very coherent comments, but I wonder if you could sort of flesh out well, what's their relationship to more standard Judaism. How would they see themselves, and how do they understand this this Sabbateanism? Is it the, the secret knowledge like Kabbalah, which doesn't need to be um, they don't need to disseminate in the sense of being missionaries? It's a similar question. Sometimes about the place of Judaism that that uh, Yeah. I, 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 uh, I guess all, all I could say was, yeah, I'd like to know too. I mean, I, I, I just don't know. Uh, 